Hello, and welcome to I Know Dino, the, the Big, Big Dinosaur, Dinosaur Podcast, Podcast, where we cover news, interviews, and discussions of all things dinosaur. Hello, and welcome to I Know Dino. I'm Garrett. And I'm Sabrina. And today we'll be talking about Torvosaurus gurnii and some dinosaur news. Last week we talked about a dinosaur discovery near Appalachian State University in Boone, North Carolina, and it looks like North Carolina is going to open a new museum, spurred partly by dinosaur discoveries in the area like that. So the North Carolina Zoo in Asheboro is going to open on March 31st, and it's going to have a new exhibit called Dinosaurs, and it's going to have animatronic dinosaurs, and it's going to have a path through the moving and roaring dinosaurs. And there's an educational video that'll tell you some real information about them other than just big plastic things. <laughs> when uh, we visited North Carolina, we went to the North Carolina Museum of Natural Sciences, and it had some really cool big dinosaurs, and it was just a generally good museum. So if you're in the area, go check out the Museum of Natural Sciences, or you can wait and see the new museum in Asheboro. In similar news, in Dallas, there's a zoo that's adding some animatronic dinosaurs. They're going to add 18 animatronic dinosaurs, the largest of which is an adult T-Rex that's 25 feet tall, and some other interesting dinosaurs. They're not charging any extra from their normal zoo admission, so if you're in Texas, that would be a fun thing to check out. They said that it's costing them about half a million dollars to set all of them up, and it looks pretty neat. In the Midwest, there's Paleo Fest, which is an annual event that goes on at the Burpee Museum in northern Illinois. And not surprisingly, this year it's called Paleo Fest 2015. And they have a new exhibit, which is Roxy the T Rex. And it's one of those men inside a T Rex costume who walks around and simulates how a dinosaur would move, which is pretty interesting. And back to Kickstarter, it seems like there's just a never-ending stream of new ideas coming out of Kickstarter. There's a woman from Allentown, Pennsylvania, and she created a life-size cardboard dinosaur costume and used it as a Halloween costume, which looks pretty fun. It's similar to the one we just mentioned at the uh, Paleo Fest, but much less realistic. It's got big googly eyes, but it's pretty cute. But the woman who made it, Lisa Glover, is currently selling things through a company that she calls Kit Rex. And right now she just sells a little theropod style dinosaur that comes in a paper cutout. And it's kind of like an origami with solid sides. So if you imagine folding together a piece of cardboard and you end up with like a physical 3D little model of a theropod. On Kickstarter right now she has a pterodactyl which is she calls a 3D paper dino puzzle. And she already met her goal, actually. It's only been up for five days, so it's pretty cool. Congratulations to her. And last but not least, we have a new LEGO Jurassic World piece of news, which is my favorite piece of news of the day. So there's a new trailer that they released, and then they're also showing it to people at the Game Developers Conference and they release some new details. So in the new game, you're going to be able to play as 20 different dinosaurs, and you'll be able to either fight other dinosaurs, or if you're familiar with the way that the LEGO games work, once you beat a level, you can go back and play as other characters who weren't originally in the scene, and you can play as one of the little dinosaurs throughout the story. So you could like run through the whole game as a small Deinonychus and you know, go through the scenes where they're like dinosaurs chasing you, but you're actually a dinosaur. It sounds fun to me. <laughs> so I can't wait to try it. I think it comes out in June, so that will be great. Our dinosaur of the day is Torvosaurus gurnii. Torvosaurus means savage lizard, and gurnii is named after the paleo artist James Gurney, who created Dinotopia, which was published in 1992. That was by far my favorite dinosaur book when I was a kid. So I think this is pretty awesome. Torvosaurus gurnii is a new species that was found in Portugal. It lived on the Iberian Peninsula, which, if you're familiar with your European geography, is what is now known as Spain, Portugal, Andorra, and parts of France. 
and it was there about 150 million years ago during the Jurassic. Torvosaurus was dug up in 2003 by an amateur paleontologist who found the jawbone, and they also found the shin bone, teeth, and parts of the tail vertebrae. Christoph Hendricks, who was a PhD student at the New University of Lisbon in Portugal, found Torvosaurus gurnii while he was studying what scientists at the time thought were bones of a Torvosaurus tanneri. Now we know that Torvosaurus tanneri is a related species, but it lived in North America's Rocky Mountains during the Jurassic, not in the Iberian Peninsula. The study about Torvosaurus gurnii was published in the Public Library of Science in March 2014. So there's two species of Torvosaurus, Torvosaurus tanneri and Torvosaurus gurnii, and Torvosaurus tanneri was found first and named in 1979. Torvosaurus tanneri was a large, heavy, bipedal carnivore that could grow to 33 feet. It was one of the largest of its time. But there's some key differences between the two Torvosauruses, which is how they realized that it was a new species they found. Torvosaurus gurnii has fewer teeth in its upper jaw, and the bone and tail vertebrae also are a little bit different. So Torvosaurus tanneri has more than 11 teeth, and Torvosaurus gurnii has fewer than 11 teeth, and their mouth bones also have different shapes. Torvosaurus gurnii had 4-inch long teeth that were blade-shaped, and they had sharp claws on their forearms that they used to dig into prey and it was about 32 feet long. The ecosystem for Torvosaurus was probably like the Serengeti. According to Thomas R. Holtz Jr., there were a lot of small, medium, and large carnivores living alongside each other, just like how modern lions, spotted hyenas, leopards, and jackals currently live alongside each other. Where Torvosaurus was found in Portugal has a lot of fossils, and it's pretty scenic with lots of cliffs over a shoreline. In the Jurassic, it also had a large river and lots of vegetation, which means a very diverse set of dinosaurs lived there. So Torvosaurus gurnii may have been the biggest predator in Europe, at least, that's been discovered so far. And it probably grew so big because it was surrounded by so many herbivores, such as stegosaurs and sauropods. So Torvosaurus probably hunted large prey, but much like... Tyrannosaurus rex and other large carnivores, it may have also been an opportunistic scavenger. Torvosaurus was smaller than T-Rex, but it had a very powerful bite nonetheless, and it also lived about 80 million years before T-Rex, but it's not an ancestor to T-Rex. They evolved what they say is convergent evolution, meaning that they both evolved to a similar type of animal and size and shape, but they're not closely related. So the paleontologist Holtz Jr. said Torvosaurus gurnii was a big bruiser predator, which means it used brute force to kill its prey instead of using its speed or element of surprise. It probably took a big bite out of the prey and, and waited for it to bleed to death, unlike T-Rex, which probably would have crushed the prey with its jaws. And the interesting thing about this discovery is that it changes the way scientists view dinosaurs in Europe during the Jurassic period. Before Torvosaurus gurnii, it was thought that most of the dinosaurs in Europe were dwarf-sized because they evolved to be smaller to fit on all the islands that formed Europe back then. Torvosaurus gurnii was part of the group Megalosauridae, if you have no idea what a megalosaur is, you should watch the TV show Dinosaurs. Earl Sinclair is supposed to be a megalosaur, although I'm sure he's not very accurate. <laughs> That's true, because he walks a lot like Barney instead of the way a dinosaur probably walked. <laughs> the Megalosauridae family was named in 1869, and it was what is called a quote-unquote wastebasket group, which means that a large variety of unrelated species were kind of put into there, probably before the scientists figured out where they belonged. Some examples include Indosaurus and Velociraptor. The family lived in the mid to late Jurassic about 170 to 148 million years ago, and they lived in North America, Europe, South America, and Africa. They were cousins of Spinosauridae, and there are some similarities between their appearances. Megalosauridae includes the Afrovenator, Debriosaurus, and Torvosaurus. And 
the group has been brought into question several times for where the lines should be drawn about what is included in Megalosauridae, or even if it should be called Megalosauridae. So Thomas R. Holtz offered an alternate group definition as all dinosaurs which are more closely related to Megalosaurus than to Spinosaurus, Allosaurus, or modern birds. Like we said, Spinosaurus was a cousin, so if you look at the family tree, you could kind of just draw a line between the two and use that as your dividing point. But other scientists have come up with alternative definitions. Some don't like the name Megalosauridae and propose the name Torvosauridae instead, and still other names have been thrown out, but Megalosauridae is the one that seems to be the favored name still. Megalosaurs were primitive theropods, and their sizes ranged from small to large, but they all had sharp teeth and three claws on each hand. These big predators are usually harder to find than their prey, so there's not too much known about megalosaurs, but they did look similar to T-Rex, and they may have been covered in protofeathers. And our fun fact of the day is there have been 108 dinosaur species discovered in Britain so far. During the Triassic, Jurassic, and Cretaceous, Britain was a land bridge between North America and Eurasia, so a lot of dinosaurs migrated and evolved around there. This includes Megalosaurus, Iguanodon, Neovenator, Eotyrannus, and Cetiosaurus. And that wraps up this episode of I Know Dino. Congratulations to Amori, who won our Big Dinosaur Podcast giveaway. Thanks for listening, and until next time. Thank you for listening to I Know Dino. If you have any questions or comments about dinosaurs, we'd like to hear from you at plesiosaur at iknowdino.com. And for more information on dinosaurs, go to iknowdino.com or follow us on Google, Facebook, Tumblr, or Twitter at iknowdino.